We're going to stick uh, with the GEA, uh, former Roscommon footballer uh, Paul Early is on the line. Good morning to you, Paul. Morning, Adrian. How are uh, you? Good. Thanks, Millie, for joining us. And uh, we'll talk to you in just a few minutes about the reason that you're here in relation to all, the All Ireland Cycle uh, 2021. 12 years in the running. We'll give people all the good uh, good detail on that and how to get involved in just a few moments' time. But I do want to keep the ball rolling because we've just been chatting about the Under 20 Championship as well. What's your yeah. expectations of that this weekend? Oh, look, isn't it fantastic to have uh, Roscommon and Offaly involved, uh, a novel pairing. Um, and uh, look, it's a 50-50 game, uh, as a lot of the under-20 games have been this year, you know, uh, close contests right across the board. I I'm guessing that any any one of our two of 10 maybe teams could have got to the final. Uh, so it's very much a 50-50 game. Offaly, I saw them play a few weeks ago, and they look uh, fantastic. Roscommon, obviously, the last... 10 minutes against down um we're, we're played some great football obviously down we're, we're very fancy so it's really a 50 50 game but mm -hmm. it is just so good to have uh you know roscommon and offaly involved obviously we're used to seeing the big teams the dublin's carries you know tyrone's involved at this level so um Hope, hope for the smaller counties in the future, yeah, Adrian. Exactly, and hopefully it translates down, it translates down the track as well. We should see about that. Any case for Mayo this weekend, Paul? Particularly, I mean, maybe Oshin Mullen is in, maybe he's out. But any case for Mayo? I, I still think Dublin are favourites. Um, you know, a lot has been spoken about the, you know, their form probably in the last few weeks. They still kicked twenty scores against against Kildare, who were defensive, obviously, put up a defensive kind of shield in in the in the Leinster final. 20 scores without Conor Callaghan kind of, you know, performing to, to his max. So that's a pretty good return. I think, you know, we always see Dublin get better as the championship uh, progresses. Um, uh, I've always felt as well that, you know, again, as the championship progresses, Mayo will feel the loss of Killian O'Connor uh, a, a lot more, obviously, as they get again, up against the, the, the better sides. Um, the biggest challenge for Mayo, as it has been in the big games against Dublin over the last number of years, is the second half return from their forwards. It's been poor against uh, Dublin in particular. I think in the final last year, I'm not even sure if they scored from play in the forward line in the second half. I don't think they did. Uh, previous big finals, the same thing. The return was poor. Um, and again, I think you know that's where they'll, they'll feel the loss of Killian O'Connor a bit more. Uh, Dublin's certainly not as strong as they were. Uh, and if you look at the bench, the bench is not as potent as it has been in the past. So I do think Mayo will be in the game at half time. Uh, the key question will be, you know, will they have a, will they be level? Will there be a deficit? They need to be ahead, I think. Um, they need to be probably four or five ahead coming into the last quarter to have a chance. Um, but I still go for Dublin. Uh, from your time involved with the international rules, Paul, was there any of that simmering tension between Mayo and Dublin players that you experienced? I, I know that the Dublin players probably, there was one year they didn't play at all, wasn't it? Because they were on their team holiday or something like that. No, I think um, the second year I was involved, James McCarthy played. Oh. Uh, he, he was the only one involved. The first year, I think we had three or four of, of the Dublin players. Uh, didn't notice it on Julie. Uh, you know, you brought them into the into this uh, panel. Maybe it was a week after the All Ireland was over. Mm. Um, you know, maybe maybe they, they they weren't best mates, the Mayo Dublin players, in the first uh, maybe week or a couple of sessions. But I never saw that kind of um, hatred, if you like to call it, um, um, uh, emerged in the training or um, in the preparation. Uh, they worked very very well together, I have to say, and I think. That's a kind of a measure of a of a really top class sports per person. They they may have that kind of as 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 I heard recently the last talk about that hatred built up, um, um, if that's the right word, uh, during championship. You know they've got to find ways to to keep them as motivated, keep themselves as motivated as possible. But I think then when they switch to a different code or a different structure or whatnot, I think they can park that uh, and uh, and move on. And I'm sure now that you know, as we as we've seen with many rivals over the last number of years in different sports, GA soccer, whatnot, there's good friendships that have developed. You know, probably after playing careers have finished, and and you'd hope to see that uh, again with the Dublin and Mayo teams uh, when they all uh, hang up their boots. 
Do you mentioned Killian's loss earlier on and, and the Yoshi Mullen thing obviously we're focusing on yeah. a little bit this morning as well but is there almost like Aidan O'Shea could make up some of the Killian loss in some regards between breaking a bit of ball winning a bit of ball scoring a few uh, taking off a few scores as well but is there a possibility that James Horan has to satisfy himself with keeping Aidan O'Shea a bit t- bit deeper a bit more towards the Mayo goal with O'Shea Mullen out to give that bit of protection or do you think he still has that freedom to get forward? I think Mayo are going to have to play the running game. That's what suits them best. They're an incredibly athletic team. That's one of the reasons why they have um, been so close to Dublin over the last number of years. Uh, that running game out of defence with um, uh, Paddy Dorkin, Oshin Mullen now on, you know, McLaughlin if he's uh, if, if he's playing and and others. That's you know mm-hmm. where where they launch. That's the launch pad of of, of much of their success. Um, the issue with playing the big full forward, and I've seen it over the last uh, two or three years <clears throat> uh, with different teams, sometimes they throw a full forward in there, but they don't support him with with uh, extra players uh, when the ball has been kicked in. And we've seen that time and time again. You know, they they're, they're, they isolate him inside, um, and Dublin are the best at getting players back when a long ball is getting in. They get, get players back to the kind of the, 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 the drop zone, as I call it, the breaking ball zone, um, quicker than any other team. You know, when you have players like Owen Merchant in there, uh, you know, with lightning pace, they just sprint back. And I think that the problem that other counties have is that they just, you know, don't, they don't release extra players into that kind of breaking ball zone. If Mayo have that as a tactic and they're going along to Aidan O'Shea, they've got to have one or two players uh, very close to him because uh, he's not going to win them all in the air. If they do play him inside, they've got to have also Kevin McLaughlin um, on the field because he is one of the best deliverers of the ball. And we saw what happened against Galway in the first couple of minutes in the second half. Kevin McLaughlin came on. Ed O'Shea was in at full forward. It was Kevin McLaughlin who kicked that lovely kind of outside of the foot, um, you know, um, pass where the ball is, um, it, you know, kicking with backspin. So it just hangs in the air, perfect height for a full forward to get set, you know, to, to take the catch. So I think if, if he is inside, you've got to have a, a Kevin McLaughlin playing to deliver those balls inside. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating watch. We uh, mentioned at the top, wanted to talk to you as well. It's it all kicked off yesterday. Uh, the All-Ireland cycle, 12th year running, runs up to August 22nd, open to all levels, Paul, inter-county competition. How far can you cycle over the course of 10 days and all uh, raising vital funds as well for the National Breast Cancer Research Institute? People can check out more details on allirelandcycle.ie. But into its 12th year and uh, getting bigger and bigger every year. Yeah, it's been fantastic, um, Adrian. Yeah, we uh, started with an eight-day event, raced the Ross uh, a number of years ago. Um, we then changed it to a three-day event because the eight days was was too hard on, on a lot of us uh, in terms of training and pr- preparation for it. And last year, obviously, we had to change and pivot. And it was a kind of a late change, and we went to this format, which was, uh, you know, the All-Ireland Cycle, our our, our uh, charity is called the, the Pink Ribbon Tour, or our cycle is called the Pink Ribbon Tour. So. Uh, we, 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 we pivoted to this All-Ireland Cycle concept where over a 10-day period, um, it's 11 this year, in fact, uh, we asked as many people as possible to register and uh, cycle wherever they want in the country or even if they if they have a, a, a stationary bike at home or what, whatnot. Cycle wherever they want. Uh, a little challenge to see how far can they go. And we built in that uh, um, inter-county and uh, club cycling club challenge as well and it just took off last year we had 1050 people who registered last year over the 10 days and, and did the cycling and uh, 112 cycling clubs involved there was three over 300,000 kilometers cycled in that 10 days last year now we put it into context that's seven and a half times around the world uh, and uh, it was just wonderful and and you know the, the, the whole purpose is to raise funds for breast cancer research for the National Breast Cancer Research Institute uh, and um, vital funds, uh, which is really, really important in the current environment. Um, research so important to, to make inroads into um, new treatments and hopefully ultimately find cures for, for the different cancers. That's what we all want to see, make, make uh, Im- improvements in, in life for people who are suffering from cancer. So, um, yeah, it's great. And it started really well yesterday. Our numbers are good. I think there's almost 10,000 kilometers cycled yesterday on a Thursday. Um, you know, over the weekend, we'll see big numbers uh, come out and uh, really happy with it so far. It's been 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 great. You're in full flight yourself, are you? 
Yeah, I got out last night. I had a bit of a mechanical problem with the bike yesterday morning, so uh, All right. uh, I, I did uh, did a piece of the last word last last night and, and, and went out for a cycle afterwards. Uh, so I got a few Ks, but uh, I've set myself probably too big a challenge uh, over the next ten days. I've set myself a target of seven fifty. Right. Uh, but I hadn't I hadn't factored in that Ross Common would be in an All Ireland final. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously, I'm uh, in Crow Park tomorrow for the Mayo yes. game and and the the deferred. Um, all Ireland semi final next week, so that's that's kind of three that's three days out of the out of the plan. So I'll have to I'll have to get up early tomorrow and and, and get in the bike and cycle to Dublin. I'd say, Paul. Well, uh, that won't give me enough uh, case. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at best look at it. People can it's a great cause. People can jump literally jump on and get involved. You can register and you can donate. AllIrelandCycle.ie. We'll keep a track in it over the next uh, few weeks. Best of luck at it and enjoy the football over the weekend as well, Paul. Thanks a million. Yeah, thanks, thanks a million, guys. Thanks a million. Sure. Appreciate your support. Not at all. Thanks a lot. Paul Early on the line there. It really is a great cause. And it runs up to August 22nd. And as Paul said, all raising vital funds for the National Breast Cancer Research Institute, allirelandcycle.ie.